Today we're going to be making these rose and light rose rhinestone earrings. I will also be making a uh, necklace to go with them in a later video. I will be adding a supply list at the end of the video. Uh, right now, I am just closing the jump rings so that they'll be ready to go when I start soldering. I'm going to start by rolling out some Play-Doh. I uh, just use a regular rolling pin and some Play-Doh. You can use off-brands. Uh, doesn't really matter. You just want a non-drying dough. You're just going to make sure that it is smooth and even. This will hold your rhinestones in place while you're soldering. You don't want to push your rhinestones down in the Play-Doh too far if you do then the Play-Doh will act as the insulation and it will not allow your piece to heat up enough for the solder to melt. Now that I have my Play-Doh nice and smooth, I'm going to begin setting out my rhinestones. These are all preset stones. The settings are silver-plated brass and the stones are set inside of that. Now that all of my pieces are in place, I'm going to go ahead and begin soldering. I am using a 300 degree solder that has the rosin core, so you don't need flux with this. I do keep flux on hand because sometimes uh, it will not be fluxed all the way through. Um, really doesn't take a whole lot of solder. You do want to heat up the piece. Once the piece is heated, it goes pretty quickly. It takes about 30 seconds for it to heat up, and it's kind of like just like drawing a line in between each piece. Uh, you want to uh, touch the solder between every single setting. You want to make sure that everything is soldered together. Uh, and once you're done, you want to go back and check your piece to make sure that you have hit every piece that you need to hit.
Now that I have finished the bottom portion of the earrings, I'm going to remove this now that it's cooled down and I will begin working on the top portion of the earring. Uh, I'm just going to turn the Play-Doh over and use it. As long as the Play-Doh is still uh, soft, a little bit sticky, then you can reuse the other side. Uh, if it's too dry, then you can't use it. I'm just going to go ahead and lay out all my rhinestones. I have all my pieces laid out for the top of the earring. I am now going to begin soldering the small pieces to the triangle. I now have all of my pieces soldered to the triangle. I'm just going to lay down a little bit of solder for the ear clip. And I am going to take a small piece of Play-Doh and place it where I want the jump ring. And I'm just going to use it to balance the jump ring while I solder. like to make sure that my uh, jump ring is closed uh, on the edge that faces the piece that I'm working on. That way it solders it closed. And I like to use the third hand when I'm working with ear clips. It just helps keep it in place. And I generally try and get my uh, third hand uh, with the piece in it flat on the surface that I'm working on and then lift it in place. And just clip it in the jaws and move it over there. And once you've got it in place, you can use your pliers to add a little pressure so that the solder actually heats up and attaches to the back of the ear clip.
I have the top finished, so now I'm going to add a jump ring to the bottom of the earring. I'm just rolling out a little bit of Play-Doh, rolling it into a ball, and, and placing it next to the setting where I'm attaching the jump ring. And I like to have the open end of the jump ring towards the piece, and that way when you solder, it solders it shut. Just adjusting a little bit and now that I have it in place I'm going to go ahead and begin soldering. Now that we have both pieces soldered, all we have to do is put them together. I'm going to take a C connector and attach it to the bottom. We're just going to put the jump ring over the little loop and go in with your pliers and close up that loop. And you want to make sure that it is closed all of the way. Sometimes it takes a couple of tries, but if there is even the slightest opening, your jump ring could slide through it, so you want to make sure it's closed all the way. And now we're just going to take the top portion and lay it on the other end of the C-connector, the other loop, and you will just close it down like you did the other. And you will be making two of these to complete the set. And that is it for this video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Keep watching. The next three pages has your supply list uh, along with a little bit of information about the items used in this video.